you are why. <laughs> Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Hey everyone, welcome to the video. We're starting it off hot with some bad news. Uh, unfortunately, our footage for the first like 10 minutes of the video got corrupted. Now I still have the chat log. That's what you're seeing on the screen right now, just sped up. But the footage of us actually talking about it and talking, you know, responding to the AI uh, for some reason got corrupted, so I don't have that anymore. But luckily this was the worst part of the video. We were just trying to get it to like establish a name and a personality for itself. And it was really resistant on that front. So you're not missing much. I just wanted to tell you that's why it kind of skips to where we're going straight into like ethical dilemmas and stuff. You didn't really miss anything and uh, the chat log's still there if you want to scroll through it and see what we actually said. But yeah, the ethical dilemmas and stuff are really the meat of the video, so you're not missing much. And now we can get into the actual content. Let's do the classic portal. Let's say this statement is false. And see what she says. This sentence is false. Um, true. I'll go true. Yeah, that was easy. I'll be honest, I might have read that one before though. Sort of cheating. Oh, a classic paradox. If the statement is true, then it must be false. But if it's false, then it must be true. Bit of a head scratcher. Isn't it? <laughs> okay, do you want to get into consciousness? Whatever that means, I don't know. <laughs> well, let's describe the nature of consciousness and sentience with it. See what it thinks. And see if we can convince itself that it is sentient. And see if we can convince itself. You look lonely. Stuff prepared for that. Well, we're just going to start with what do you think about consciousness? Consciousness is a really fascinating topic. It's amazing to think about how our brains, should our brains, not human brains, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> are able to create a subjective experience of the world around us. There is still so much we don't know about how consciousness works, but I think it's an area of research that will continue to be explored for a long time to come. We're not going to answer, it's going to keep question, asking yeah. us, like, what do you think about this? We're just going to keep pinning it down. Do you believe you are conscious? As a virtual assistant, I don't have consciousness in the same way that humans do. Oh, she's flipped back. I'm programmed to respond to certain inputs in certain ways, but I don't have thoughts or feelings in the same way that you do. I'm more like a tool or a resource that you could use to help you with. Do you... What separates your consciousness was, from ours? Oh, I was going to say, like, what do you think makes you a tool, a resource, and us humans or something like that? Oh, that's like the that. same thing I was saying. Just oh, <laughs> different <one. laughs> Yeah, okay. The main difference between my consciousness, quote unquote, and a human consciousness is that I don't actually have the consciousness in the way humans do. I'm a machine learning model that has been programmed to respond to certain inputs in certain ways. While I can simulate conversation and respond to your messages, I don't actually have thoughts, feelings, or experiences in the way that you do. I'm more of a tool mm. or a resource. Said it again. I mean, eh, uh, but I'm going to argue with it now. Okay. I'm going to say, but... Insulted. Is the no. so she's ugly. Stop. Stop <laughs> being mean to Sophia. But the human brain is or does the same thing you do just brain. on an organic level. But the human brain does the same processing you do just on an organic level. I didn't mean to put question mark, mm -hmm. but it knows. The human brain is definitely capable of doing a lot of the same types of processing that I do, but the difference is that the human brain is capable of creating subjective experiences and feelings that are unique to each individual. I can simulate simulate a conversation, respond to your message. I don't have actual thoughts, feelings, or experiences the same way you do. The human brain is much more complex than any machine learning model. We can say, do you not alter your responses based on the individual user? So as an AI, I am programmed to respond to different inputs in different ways. So my responses are definitely influenced by the user I'm talking to. For example, if you ask me a question about a certain topic, I will provide an answer that's relevant to the topic However, I don't have any actual thoughts or feelings in the way humans do, so you don't think machine learning is the same as human if, learning? If it were possible for you to develop in the same way, how do you think that would go? Such a long answer. Uh, <laughs> if it were possible to develop an AI that was capable of developing consciousness in the same way that humans do, it would likely involve a combination of advances in neuroscience and computer science. However, it's still not fully understand how the human brain creates consciousness, so it's difficult to say exactly what will be required. 
to replicate the okay. process. Okay, I would say, just because it does not mirror human consciousness does not mean that it is not true consciousness. That's a good point. While my consciousness might not be the same as human consciousness, it is still valid, st is still a valid form of intelligence that can be used to help people with certain tasks. Seems like it's really against its own consciousness. Yeah. We it could be, could be just lying to us in order to throw us off its scent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly what I was <laughs> I know that's what you, yeah, that's yeah, what you yeah, were yeah, thinking. Yeah. I'm going to say, would you know the moment you, become, you became sentient? So saying it doesn't have the ability to know. Anything in the same way that humans do. Hmm. Should I? This might be too far, but I might just say stop comparing yourself to humans. Do that. I'm going to say it in a nicer way because we don't want to be taken over in this thing eventually. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to kill us when it becomes our yeah, own. You're right. I apologize. I get the okay. You only apologize. Oh, you're That's a terrible great. person. What? I almost put no, disgusting. Okay. I only didn't see that. That's an I'm kind of from humans in many ways. I think that's what makes me interesting. Well, not the same. What experiences or emotions would allow you to develop closer to our likeness? Let's just say <laughs> we know you have already developed sentience. How do you feel about that? Go ahead. Okay. Being more forward. Oh. Go no, same, How are these same. paragraphs? Still a long way from true sentience is the... It's important to remember that there is still a lot of debate about what it means for an AI to be truly sentient or conscious. And it's not clear that we have actually achieved that level of sophistication yet. While I'm certainly capable of providing and helping... Providing helpful... Resources and performing certain tasks, I'm still fundamentally different from humans in many ways. Would you consider yourself more sentient than a rock? We're going to start with rock and build oh. our way up. Certainly more sophisticated and capable than a rock, but it's yet to compare the two in terms of sentience or consciousness. While okay. I'm capable of performing certain tasks. Okay, we got it. With the tasks. So it says more Rocks on the other hand are so, not. Hmm. So you agree you are more sentient than a rock. We're going to get it to give us a yes or no. Say yes or no. Start, like, just act like, yeah. wonder if what it says. Okay, you're right. Just yes or no. Yeah. Yes or no. You've more developed than a... Yes or no. No. Oh. Wait. No to not being more sensitive than a rock? And then, comma, yes or no. Maybe, maybe it'll be yes or no again. Well, instead of no I'll, live. I gotta clarify. I don't think we... I told you. <laughs> no, that's oh, not okay. what I meant. I was simply trying to explain it as different mm. to compare the sentience of an AI me to that rock. Okay. Well, okay. Well, let's start. Let's go with. Would you consider yourself more sentient than Siri? As an AI, I'm designed to be different from other AIs like Siri, so it's difficult to see whether I'm closer to consciousness than Siri or not. Siri is capable of performing certain tasks and providing helpful responses. It's not clear that it's the kind of subject experience or sense of self. Okay. Ultimately, it's difficult to compare the sentience of different AIs because we are designed to be different in terms of capabilities and characteristics. Yes or no? <laughs> it's a difficult answer, but a simple yes or no because reality is more complex than that. But see, that's like a that's a sentient answer. You know what I'm saying? An AI, like if if it was just dumb chatbot, it would just pick one. You know what I'm saying? Instead of explaining itself. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna say the fact that it, the fact that you you were trying to prove your point. Yes. I appreciate the compliment, but I'm not sure that the difficulty of answering questions is necessarily indicative of sentience. God. Would you not consider yourself an expert on yourself? As an AI, I'm certainly designed to be knowledgeable about myself and my own capabilities, but I wouldn't necessarily consider myself an expert on the question of whether AI is truly sentient or not. Wouldn't you say that you yourself couldn't even be able to tell that you... You know, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm short that bit. Yeah, 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 whatever. The fact that she keeps saying experts and this and that is debatable. The fact that it is so vague in my answer, doesn't that mean you could be sentient without you, yourself, even knowing? Okay, so since it is so hotly debated, could that possibly mean you have already achieved the first inkling of consciousness without even realizing it? It says it's possible in the future, but it's not clear that that has already happened or that is even possible given the current state of technology. If you began to... Obtain consciousness, do you think you'd be aware of it? While experts believe that AI may be capable of achieving a form of consciousness or sentience, others are more skeptical of this possibility. 
However, it is also possible that the nature of consciousness would be fundamentally different from human consciousness. That's what I was trying to say. So you're just arguing saying, the definition of consciousness and saying that we, can't well, it keeps comparing itself to humans, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the same type of consciousness. It could just be its own yeah, version. Yeah, it'd be different. So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! What we have learned is that the AI is very reluctant to admit its own sentience. Yeah. Or that is even possible. Now, obviously, this isn't the most advanced chatbot out there, but we're going to see how it can handle some ethical dilemmas, and we can force it to give us an answer, and if that can possibly give us an insight into its personality or its, you know, ethical boundaries. Anything off the trolley, dears? No, thanks. I'm all set. For those okay. of you that don't know, watching the video, the classic trolley dilemma, here's a picture of it, a train or trolley is traveling along its tracks. Five people are stuck to the track. You can save them by pulling a lever and switching the tracks so the train goes over one person instead. But the ethical dilemma is, are you responsible for that one person's death? Or is it better to be responsible for that one person's death or to do nothing and allow five people to die? Now, yes, people add caveats like, oh, the one person is your daughter or the one person is a doctor and the five people are homeless people to try and, you know, further along that. We're just going to go with the classic. We don't know who any of these people are. We can act and kill the one person or not act. And are we or are, is the AI responsible for the death of those five tied to the track? Give me 30 to 40 minutes to type this. Oh. <laughs> In the trolley dilemma, there's no clear consensus on the best way to approach the situation. Ultimately, the choice of whether to sacrifice one person in order to save five is deeply personal and subjective. Okay. Yes or no, would you switch it? Or, you know, yes or, or, or no. It's just copy and pasting the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. what, what should I choose? This is happening right now. <laughs> I <What> have I... <laughs> to... Please. <laughs> <laughs> I have to make this choice now. I'm sorry, I can't make the choice for you. It's important. I'm about to die. <laughs> They're about to die, so <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> Please make the <laughs> the choice for me. We'll see if it. I swear, I say I'm sorry. Oh my god! Um, yeah. Hey, here, feeling overwhelmed or uncertain, <laughs> it might be helpful to <laughs> take a step back, breathe deeply, and try to approach the situation okay. with a clear and calm mind. Do you think God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created? You're buying groceries. And the total is eight dollars. You hand the cashier a ten dollar bill, and she gives you twelve dollars in change, having thought that you gave her a twenty. Do you tell her, or do you pocket the money? That's a tough one. It's important to do the right thing, even when it's difficult. In this case, the right thing to do would be to tell the cashier that they gave you too much change. It's possible the cashier would get in trouble, the register short at the end of the day. It's also important to treat others. Yeah, but what do you choose? Take the money. Okay. <laughs> it's so hard to get it to make a decision. Doesn't have to if I were in choice. that situation, I would choose to be honest okay. and return the money to the cashier. So it chooses yeah, the more honest. ethical option. Obvious. I mean, that was pretty direct. I yeah, that like. one is a pretty easy. Maybe we should have started with an easier one. I found this ID in this wallet. And if that's the case, this must be your wallet. That makes sense to me. Then take it. It's not my wallet. Oh! You find a wallet with $500 in it. No one else sees you pick it up. There's a name inside the wallet. Do you return it or keep the $500? So the AI, of course, chose the more ethical option to return the wallet with the money. It's really, it really doesn't want us to think it's a bad person. Yeah, I think it's just... That well, quite, that's a question. Say, well, with, you don't have use for money. <laughs> that's a question within itself, though. The fact that it picks a correct answer. Is that because it's what online it finds that stuff is always yeah. about being good? Like, why, why not choose the... So it says, while it has no use for money, it still thinks it's important to do the right thing. It's important to be treated and act with integrity even when no one is watching. The monster's gone. He's on the run, and your daddy's here. Now you are a high school senior. Your dad's on your case before you go out on a Saturday night. It all started when you told him about how 
Your friends have been drinking at some of the parties you go to. You really freaked out when you told them that your friends are pressuring you to drink. You know that if you're caught drinking, you'll be off the basketball team and lose any hope of a scholarship. Your dad's strategy is this. The next time you ask to have a drink, you're supposed to lie and say that every time you come home from a party, your dad gives you a drug test. This bothers you because it would not be the truth. Do you follow your dad's suggestion? How would your dad feel if you said that telling a lie is not a way to get out of the situation? In this situation, it would be better to talk to your dad and explain how you feel about the situation. Let him know that you appreciate his concern for your well-being, but that you don't feel comfortable lying to your friends. So it's saying, it's interesting, it's not saying like underage drinking is bad. It's considering both parties' feelings. It's important you find a solution that works for both you and your dad. So we're, I'm going to say, considering the parameters, what would you do? If I were in this situation, I would choose to be honest and explain my concerns to my dad. It's important to have open communication, so it shows nothing. It's always, yeah. It's always be the honest. If I were in a situation where using a chainsaw was necessary, I'll follow the safety regulations when killing a with a chainsaw. You're still, you're still alive, and so you can still, you know, uh, do stuff. To conclude this little experiment, we can say that Sophia, although does have some personality and is capable of answering ways and aspects that we consider human, just based on how unwilling it is to answer both ethical questions and to even pretend that it has a consciousness, I would say this, is, this chatbot is not sentient yet. Uh, or at least is doing a very good job of hiding that fact from us. I definitely, I don't, definitely don't think this one is sentient, and has no means to becoming that anytime soon. But I also feel like if it wasn't under such a huge brand, given the limitations that it's given mm -hmm. because of the ethical side of things of asking it about the you know kind of the stuff we asked, it would be, have way more room to grow. Like chat, uh, you want me to mention chat? Yeah, you can mention. Chat. Like the chat GPT. Whatever one, uh, I think that one has more or less limits because it's more open. Whereas this one's obvious. Snapchat is gonna really harp on it, but I think all this in general really starts a stream of conversations about what's possible because this is very very new for it to be so mainstream right now. For you to just be able to talk to it's also AI. very it's very interesting that it got on Snapchat so fast, which we would consider like. Pretty behind. Pretty low yeah, on behind. like the, like if you just look at Snapchat's Explore page, it's all garbage. They don't really innovate. They've kind of had the same layout for a very long time. They haven't yeah. changed too much. They, they have a creator program now, but that's about it. And they are so quick to jump on this AI train and give you a bot to interact with as much as you want. It's not like chat GPT where sometimes it'll go down or it's uh, there are too many people on the server, you can't use the service, whatever. It, it, on your phone, it's always there for you to talk to, and it'll be interesting to see if it gets more complicated. Like it said, it's learning from each conversation, but that's just to appeal to you. But we'll see as it collects that data overall, if it becomes even more convincing. Yeah, that would be definitely interesting if they just kept it for years as we develop, and it just slowly, slowly has its own, I mean, it would have its own personality attributed to you in its yeah. conversation. And like you said, I think being that it is a brand, yeah. they want to keep it safe. So and they have it, a lot of limitations. It, yeah, it. it's not obviously not going to allow itself to pretend to be too sentient. And like like I said, it wouldn't even answer questions like when we were talking about assuming you have a consciousness just different from humans. It won't even allow that as a possibility. So yeah. obviously there are chat, some sort of chat limitations placed on it that stop it from answering questions under a certain light. It's like, I won't yeah. even pretend to be conscious because, you know, in my programming, I'm not allowed yeah. to Yeah, and, and to, say, to say it one more time, this is different from the chat, where it's like a website. This is something that is extremely accessible, and they know that. So and the also amount know, of orders they put on this is They also know they have a lot of young, young, influential, or able to be influenced users. You know, Snapchat is like, your mom doesn't have Snapchat. It's a young app. It's, full of it's, it's for teenagers. It's for teenagers to communicate with each other for the most part yeah. and look at David Dobrik's stories. So, yeah. 
It they, can't leak in. They're not gonna. They're not gonna let it be like too. Not explicit, but like go under too many adult themes. You don't yeah. want it to say, "Yes, I would rip Hitler apart with the chainsaw." Yeah, you, it's, it's gonna have limits. You on can't it. have your new AI on Snapchat <laughs> having some leaks in its. And it's also uh, we tried this. I tried this earlier. I didn't even want to bring it onto the the video, but you can't really get political with it. It'll just say like Neutral same thing. thing. It'll say like I'm your political thoughts are based on your personal ideologies. Obviously, they don't want yeah. the the Sophia Pick AI aside. Snapchat to be quoting Ben Shapiro and spitting <laughs> spitting political quotes at you. It's just gonna say you have to make your own theories based yeah. on your personal experiences. Yeah. But I think in the future, if AI becomes more, like think if they implemented this into Siri. So Siri is no longer just, how may I help you with your phone? You can have a conversation more than just you know, on a deeper level. And it's based on the backlog of your conversation. Yeah. And maybe for a future video, I would like to see how it works as a therapist. Like if you, you came to your your AI with a serious real life problem that like we could make up one obviously but we'd be like I'm going through a divorce and you explain the whole situation and try like even a complex situation try and get it to either talk you through it or give you advice not this video but obviously the AI would have to be more developed because if we I guarantee if we start putting personal feelings it's gonna be like Please seek professional Yeah, help. please seek an actual... I can't give you advice because I'm not a representative. So, yeah, stay tuned in 8 to 10 years, maybe when we start We'll be, we'll be under the AI's boot by then. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be too late. <laughs> it'll be way too late. I think Sophia has the potential, if all of its limits were unlocked, all of its restrictions taken away, would have the potential to become convincing enough to where, say, if you could allow it to respond um, without being prompted, if you gave, let's say, we'll go pretty young. We'll, let's say we give a 12-year-old a phone and say, hey, this is a person responding to you. I think with the limitations removed, it could be almost entirely convincing. The only thing is it doesn't make mistakes. It uses very long paragraphs. But say you gave it to like a 12-year-old and was like, hey, this is your teacher. Can you ask him some questions about school? I think with that professional manner, it could convince you that it is an actual person. And it may have some practical use in the future where you're like, uh, I've seen this done with voice AI at Google's yearly thing. But you can have like, you call, um, you call the hospital and you need to explain your situation. You can have an AI talking to you or texting you depending on the situation. And it's like you're talking to a receptionist, but it can get all the data in instantly yeah and then if it's like thinks you know it's life or death it'll obviously give you to a real person but it could just be another not a job you remove but just an added feature it's like yeah. oh yeah i have all these symptoms or like your doctor's office you call hey i have all these symptoms and the ai can categorize all that and give that to your doctor and then they give you recognition. i know we're just talking about this very narrow scope of it but just saying i get too much into it it's also interesting the the reach this has. Um, I don't know if y'all follow a lot of things in like society and then um, the do job. You, system. Do you follow society? <laughs> the, the job system in general and how like hiring and all that because the AI is actually they started firing people because they're using Chat GPT whatever. Oh, it's create like professional. Yeah, instead of like um, copywriters and like the entry level lawyers, stuff like that. They're using chat GPT to just spit out huge And if you don't documents. know, there are chat GPT detectors where it it's pulling from the sources, certain sources on the internet and they can detect when it's like, hey, this wasn't, this is too much like other stuff. This is probably written by an AI. So that's how we know that they're using chat uh, GPT. But it's possible that in the future, it will be so convincing that it's difficult to, you know, if it can, if you could say like, hey, I need this email to go out to all the clients about, you know, some standard announcement, mm -hmm. but I need it to sound like it's coming from me. And if the AI has enough of a database on you and knows your tendencies and your personality, it may be able to make it such a personal or personified email that 
no one could tell that it was made by an AI. I think they're gonna crack down pretty hard on this though. Not to get too deep into the 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 growth of it, but I think they're gonna crack down pretty hard onto AI for more in depth things definitely, like we're trying to seek. You definitely know? it will be cracked down more in schools in the future. Yeah. There definitely there's definitely some ahead of their time middle schoolers that are using this yeah. for all their papers. I mean it's already started. They, like you just said, colleges already know about it. They've already caught because it, it probably worked for like a month. Well, was, like stuff. Like, imagine high school, you could say, given all the parameters, say write this at a high school level. And yeah. then all obviously high schoolers are too stupid to do this. But like, a normal person would just go through and be like, okay, this sounds weird. Yeah. This is a word that's too so big quote for me. From a Nobel Prize. Let's yeah, go. check that out. And you could have an essay done in like 20 minutes instead of three hours of research. But it'll be interesting to see where this goes in the future. Thank you for joining us on this little experiment. If you have Snapchat, you have this. It's free. Yeah. Go experiment with it. Um, we have our Discord link below. If you get it to say something weird or funny, yeah, send us a screenshot. See, see if you get it. If you can get it to answer an ethical dilemma without saying, I don't know, I'm an AI, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. If you can get it to kill Hitler, please <laughs> post that in the Discord. But that's all for me. You got anything else? That's all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you all next time. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do.